Cari amici di Autostile, è ormai una consuetudine che il centro stile Toyota ED2, presieduto da Ian Cartabiano, animi i nostri incontri sul design auto presentando ogni anno modelli di grande interesse. Limitandoci ai tempi recenti, nel 2018 ci fu la presentazione a sorpresa della nuova RAV4. Nel 2019 fu la volta della Lexus UX. Poi, come si sa, i nostri incontri in villa si sono trasferiti sul web, con visite nei design centers delle case. In queste nuove condizioni di dialoghi a distanza, Lance Scott, direttore del centro di Sofia Antipolis, nel 2020 ci ha presentato una bella sorpresa la Yaris Cross, un crossover di ridotte dimensioni, capace di muoversi con agilità nel traffico urbano e anche nelle escursioni del tempo libero. Quest'anno, con la presentazione di Aigo X, Lance ci fa capire come sia importante la sfida che Toyota vuole giocare nel settore delle piccole utilitarie e utilitarie. In questo caso di classe A, che le case auto tendono invece sempre più a trascurare, alla ricerca di un contenimento dei costi per le emissioni. La scommessa di Aigo X si gioca su diversi piani, in primo luogo garantendo un'impostazione di guida molto agile, con un motore dai consumi contenuti, quasi da ibrido, con dotazioni di sicurezza attiva e passiva tipiche di veicoli di classe superiore, eccetera. Ma il luogo comune che Lance vuole sfatare è che questo, che chiamerei felino della giungla urbana, debba avere, in quanto vettura utilitaria, una livrea ordinaria o addirittura dimessa. Come vedremo nella presentazione di Lance, invece, anche una utilitaria, peraltro ricca di contenuti tecnici, può avere un design cool. Pertanto, buona partecipazione a tutti a questa prossima presentazione da Sofia Antipoli. Welcome, welcome to AutoStyle Digital Design uh, 2021 edition and welcome Lance Scott, General Manager of Design at Toyota 82. Welcome Lance, how are you? Thank you Alessia, I'm doing very well, thank you. It's good to see you again. Good to see you and you have a very, very nice background. So a surprise for yeah, yeah. us, a beautiful red Ego Cross. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's great to be able to do this uh, presentation again this year. Um, and uh, yeah, as already uh, Mr. Artioli mentioned, we're going to talk about the IGO Cross this year. Um, we have two, uh, I think, really, well, I think, <laughs> really cool uh, sort of movies to show you this year. The first one 
is going to be related to the car behind me, the IGO Cross Prolog, um, which we uh, made here in ED Square and was launched uh, to the to the public in back in March. Yeah. Um, I think you know, what we really wanted to do is 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 you know make a big impact into the A segment and and explain to everyone what we were planning to do with the production car, which was was going to be released later. So. Um, the first movie is basically all about design. It's all about ED Square, and um, I think it's going to be yeah quite interesting for people to see. And, and it, it links very well with last year, where we did a, a little bit our own tour of ED Square. This movie is, is going to show a more uh, exciting tour of ED Square with some really cool drone footage. So we are following the timeline, the cross timeline. Uh, last year, exactly. uh, the Yaris cross, and, and now the IGO cross. So I will launch the, the video and enjoy it. Great. This project was so fun. I really think this car is fun. It's fun to look at. I love it. And as a car person, I want to drive this car. When you finally see it, it's the best feeling on earth. And the best moment, I think, is when you see the car completed. It's like a magical moment. It looks super dynamic and playful. It's great. That's what we always try to do in Toyota, is create products which put smiles on people's faces. We strongly believed that there was a chance to bring bold, exciting, and passionate design into this segment. And I think we did it. My name is Ian Cartabiano. I'm the president of ED Square, which is short for Toyota European Design Development. I personally believe everybody deserves a cool car, and we strongly believe that in this segment, we could create a vehicle with emotional, passionate, and exciting design, and I think we carried it out. We call it the IGO Cross Prologue because it's the next step in development. It's a teaser, if you will. Maybe it's a preview. The aim of this project was to reimagine the A segment. In a segment overlooked by others, we saw opportunity. We strongly believed that there was a chance to bring bold, exciting, and passionate design into this segment. We found that a lot of cars in this A segment are cute. So we wanted to shake things up a bit. With the IGO Cross Prologue, we wanted to create a design that had a fun image, 
um, a naughty attitude. And we found during the pandemic that although many people live in urban areas, there's a desire to get out as well. So we really wanted to create a vehicle that was go anywhere and do anything. And because this car was specifically designed for Europe, we really looked at it as a completely European design process from start to finish. Uh, we developed new process and new ways to create design in a faster cycle. So we combined hand sketching, digital study modeling, 3D printing, and VR design reviews to create the stunning concept that you'll see here. We assigned a small dedicated team from start to finish to focus on a unified message all the way through the project. And we did it here at ED Square. Curvature, but this height actually, or this kind of being more direct and straight. Cars are a passion I've had for a long time, and um, yeah, it's it's my hobby when I was young to draw cars, and now for the past 25 years I've had the pleasure to be able to do it as a job and get paid for it, which is uh, kind of nice. It's designed to have the intersection, but when they rub down, sometimes it becomes a little bit wavy, so then the designer puts the tape on to, to create the line again. Just imagine this, and then the shark can keep going. It'd be really nice. This is going to basically fade out. We wanted to, to give a little bit of a, a, a very bold but cheeky personality. Basically, we worked on the bitone. So bitone is where we have a black area. The rear of the car runs all the way from the underside to the back over to the roof. And this was giving a very forward motion feeling to the balance of the car. Combined with the big wheels or the lifted up stance of the car, this gave us very kind of agile, something which is going to you know, nip in and out of the small roads in the city. It's going to be fun to drive. It's going to give you a nice high eye point uh, when you're driving in the city environment. We were concentrating on giving the car uh, a little bit more in you know, a kind of cheeky look, combining these kind of two uh, clamping lamps to give a very distinctive uh, downroad graphic, which will give this kind of really iconic image to the, the iGo. We're using the hexagonal theme this time on the iGo in all the details, and the bitone line itself is also part of a hexagon. A very simple glass hatch is framed by the high identity, high tech rear lamps and we utilize the lamp not only for illumination but also for the handle for the rear hatch. So we integrated on the lower part a, a mounting point specifically for their bike rack. We also wanted to include a couple of uh, action cameras into the door mirrors. We integrated roof rails into the roof of the car. They line up with the rear combination lamp, giving us a very sophisticated overall appearance. The process is very much a team effort. This is the great thing about ED Square. We have a lot of different nationalities, a lot of different personalities, and we all have different ideas. This is the most important part of being a global company. But of course, from ED Square point of view in Europe, we very much want to, to promote the European style and the European kind of uh, dynamic um, within the cars of Toyota. wanted to design cars and uh, well, one of the reasons my dad used to work in the car industry and I never wanted to do kind of office work so much I really like to create and draw stuff but I think it's just like I love drawing I don't know if I had the skills but I love to do it so it was a pleasure and uh, this is how I decided to become a car designer so the four wheels high clearance hyper dynamic cabin the strong fenders expressive headlamps Really nice, central or precision organic surface. Up and that's the car. Yeah, actually, the, we do a lot of research. For example, in Berlin, we did is uh, interview people that were like really into that world. So like uh, DJs, 
fashion designers. We just interested what they like, what they want to do in their life, how they perceive the world and basically nothing to do with cars actually. The most is far away from cars, the most interesting for us it is. Then we go into the designing the product that reflect those kind of reflections and then it's the development of those sketches into something that is full size most of the time or now more and more digital but that has to be kind of a real object that people can kind of turn around, see and judge. That's really cool. And then once all this is finished, we scan the car, we rebuild everything in CG and then we make the final milling and from that final milling we make, uh, we make the car, that's the final product. Probably the stronger thing we see when we look at the car is the, is the architecture. So we see this kind of a frame that holds the car from the back and this kind of super agile bubble of energy sitting on it that is ready to jump. And then the stance of the car is really the four wheels that are really on each corner. It's easy to see that the car is going to be easy to maneuver everywhere in the city environment. Just like, ah. Oh. <laughs> so yeah. I still like this green color. My responsibilities are, of course, creating a new material and a colorful exterior and the interior, and also to make the concept from the beginning phase. Uh, through emerging about the customer's reaction. So, of course, I, I'm a creator to create a future kind of material, but also I, I'm a customer, so how I feel. So it's very really important to emerging so to create a color for me. <laughs> for this project, actually, so color was a, a kind of center so color concept was a spice since the beginning. Then we are discussing a lot so which kind of spice gonna be the best for the, this project. So we decided to use uh, four different flavors, chili, ginger, black pepper, and the wasabi. So red color always has a super strong impression, has a more sporty atmosphere also, and uh, it can be how to say, my impact for, for customer research. You can see the, the small blue pigment so from the surface, so it's very effective to enforce the dynamic atmosphere. That's why we name it the sparkling chili red. This Igo Cross Prologue project was so fun, and I really think this car is fun. It's fun to look at. I love it. And as a car person, I want to drive this car. And I always think that's a good test of the final result. Um, as designers, the creation process is what we live for. And sometimes it can be a little bit of a torturous process because you're always waiting to see the final result. And when you finally see it, it's the best feeling on earth. We do all the research, we do the sketch, we do the development. This part takes a lot of time and a lot of energy and we never see the car completed. We just see pieces everywhere and randomly assemble and everything. And this is super frustrating. And the best moment, I think, is when we see the car in one color, completely shiny, then it's just like, it's like a magical moment. When we see the car, when it's fully painted, when it's rolled in and the lights are on it, then of course you can look back and say, yeah, and uh, all, that, all that stress, all that hard work was worth it. It's why I'm still a car designer after all these years. I truly love this job. I get excited every time I see the final product. And I'm really proud of the team at ED Square for creating such a beautiful Igo Cross Prologue that's going to revolutionize and change the A segment.
So Lance, let me say, very, very beautiful video and uh, you have fun to do that, to, to create this kind of video uh, and, and the same yeah. thing to <clears throat> develop this, this project because uh, yeah. it just, it seems from, from the video, from the interviews with your designers that uh, you have a lot of fun to create the new, the new concept, the new car, uh, the new Idol Cross. Yeah, of course. I mean, the small cars always have, you know, a lot of personality. And uh, yeah, especially the one behind me, uh, we really, you know, exaggerated this a lot. And uh, we did it during the lockdown period, so it wasn't a, an easy process. But uh, we had a very small team, always uh, super enthusiastic about, uh, you know, doing the best we could. And um, yeah, I mean, a fun car needs a fun team to work on it. And then ED Square, you know, that's one of our, um, you know, goals to actually do a great job, but also to really enjoy doing it. So yeah, the project was fun and the video as well. You know, we had a great team working on the video and the drone footage uh, was, was just amazing to watch. That's beautiful. Uh, you developed the, the project during the, the lockdown, the pandemic time, uh, Lance? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we started the project um, uh, around uh, kind of uh, September. September time, we got the, the brief from, from TME, uh, Toyota Motors Europe, to, to make a show car. Um, of course, you know, Geneva was, was, was touch and go, so they eventually decided to go for a, a virtual launch themselves. But yeah, we did a lot of the, the initial you know, ideation for the show car, kind of at a, you know, in a semi-lockdown condition. And then, yeah, once we could open up and we could get into the modeling studio, the, the process became a little bit more easy. But uh, yeah, it was a challenge, but uh, it was fun. And the, uh, how the show car can influence the, the production model? Well, in this, in this case, um, ED Square worked on the original themes for the production car first. So we, we kind of um, uh, finalized uh, these themes for not just the exterior, but also the interior and also the color, color material finish concept. Yeah. Uh, we finalized these back in, back in end of 2018. And then we passed all of this on to our, our colleagues up in the TME or Toyota Motor Europe styling studio in, in Brussels where you know, they did a really good, really, you know, a fantastic job to interpret and, and to take our, our themes and working with a, a strong engineering team in Europe and the sales and marketing team. Uh, they took our directions, they put them into, you know, through the production process. And that's the car you're gonna see on, not only on the next video, but also it'll be on the streets uh, early next year. So that was you know, a really exciting process done completely in Europe. Very, 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 yeah, very good. And uh, we can just uh, see everything in the in the next video. And so enjoy it, and then we we'll come back with the Lance Scott. Thank you. Great. Hi everyone, I'm Piers. I'm Hi a designer everyone. and an architect, and I'm passionate about cities and their suburbs and how we can get around them better. That's why I'm delighted to be with you today as we discover the new Toyota Igo Cross. <laughs> Six months ago, we had the chance to show many of you a concept car, the Toyota Igo Cross Prologue. We were thrilled by your reactions, by what you said. That you felt the same way that we did. And that's why today we're even more excited to be showing you the car that soon is going to be turning heads on the city streets of Europe. Today's programme, we've got a full presentation of the new Igo Cross. We're going to meet the experts who understand cities and the mobility needs of their inhabitants. We're going to talk to the people behind the Igo Cross who can tell you everything you'd like to know about this exciting new car. In fact, throughout the video, our Toyota experts will be delighted to answer your questions. Just click on the bottom right corner of the screen to ask anything you'd like. And because Toyota's new Igo Cross is made especially for Europe's cities and suburbs, let's take a quick tour of Europe together. But a tour of Europe not quite like the others. We're going to see how Europe's cities and ways of living have shaped the new Igo Cross. Ready to join me? Let's not keep you waiting any longer. 
And now, without further ado, the moment we've all been waiting for. Wow, fantastic. It's a great car, isn't it? Now, let's go on our I Go Cross European city trip. Hi, everybody. I've just arrived in Copenhagen. Danish bicycle yeah, yeah. through the city streets to meet Anna Bedkel, futurist, yeah. which I think must be the best thing in the world to be. Oh, hi. Hi, Anna. Hi, Good Pierce. Doing. Good to see you. Very good to see you. Nice to meet you. And I'm... welcome to Copenhagen. I see you already gone native with I the have... electric bikes. Well, I love cycling <laughs> and I love being in cities. So two of my favorite things. Yeah, Copenhagen is perfect for you then. So, Anne, what does your work as a futurist involve? My work involves studying cities in both current cities and future cities, but particularly I'm looking at the future of urban living. Interesting. What can your work tell us about the future of cities? One of the trends that we are almost certain will continue to grow is urbanization. People moving to cities and living in cities and also trying to make the best out of future urban living. We've gone from 2% to now more than 50% and we're projected to go to 80% of the world's population living in cities. And what about Copenhagen? In my humble opinion, Copenhagen is already very much a city of the future. It's allowing a lot of experiments such as this neighborhood where we're walking, Bryggervangen. They are really trying to both involve citizens in city planning. They also try to build a community instead of a neighborhood or instead of a, like a part of the city. They want to build a community where there's places like this where people can meet and actually catch up. And it's going to be natural for people to um, go meet their neighbors and talk to the neighbors in a place like this where, where we're walking. And what about their mobility needs? Future infrastructure is going to be increasingly electrified. But I do believe in the meantime, we have to be pragmatic about other solutions and also having wide range of transport solutions for the people living here. Thanks so much, Anna. That's been so interesting. Well, yeah, thank you. Good to meet you. Uh, where's my bike? <laughs> Is it that way? Over that way, I think. Bye. Bye Anna. bye. I learned a lot from Anne about European cities. And now Andrea Carlucci, who's going to talk to us about the bold new car Toyota's bringing to these cities very soon. So Andrea Carlucci, as Vice President of Product and Marketing for Toyota, tell me why the A segment is so important for you. Uh, this represents um, a key uh, access point to the brand so strategically is a very important segment but more importantly is a segment that allows us to provide our customers with a very uh, accessible solution a practical solutions uh, especially for uh, living in town it used to be a segment that was quite bland in some ways but I think the original iGo challenged that we brought something completely new, breaking the rules, being able to bring emotion, which is very much linked to style. We did it in the same way, not uh, compromise on the compact size, not compromise on the practicality in a way, but connecting um, in a different way uh, with the customer we were looking for. In terms of the personality of the car, you've described it as a European car. What does that mean? The car is conceived, is designed, is going to be manufactured in Europe for Europeans. 
is the very first example in which Europeans gather thinking what this product that for the first time is 100% Toyota and only for Toyota, having in mind a specific target customer with a very clear um, need of living in urban cities. Who do you think the main customers will be? It will be person living um, in a crowded urban area with a strong connection with uh, design and looking for characteristics that are basically the characteristics of a very European profile. The Argo Cross is an A-segment car, but it's built on a B-segment platform, isn't it? Indeed. This allows to move and to make evolve the character of the vehicle in something which is clearly closer to, to the B-segment in terms of uh, driving characteristics, driving pleasure, but without losing that nimbleness, that agility, uh, which remains standing for the category. The other thing I notice looking at it is that it is super tall. I mean, is it a kind of crossover? It's certainly a crossover. It is establishing a new reference for the A-Class. It is what consumers, especially in urban areas, want. High hip point to sit, to have a control of the situation around and feeling extremely safe as it happens in a real SUV. An SUV convertible crossover sounds great to me it is i think uh, when i look at the wheel dimensions against the body the ratio and the use uh, quite authentic of uh, the color code with uh, this bitone that is gonna really to break the rule of the category it is giving definitely something which is unique and authentic we do again something memorable i told you go for a drive and take it home now this is the key, my friend. Sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm off. The Igo Cross is designed for cities like Rome, and that's why I'm looking forward to meeting another architect, Paola Olivia, and she's a partner in the practice Brain Factory. That must be her. Hi, Paola. Hi, Pierre. Nice to meet you. Benvenuta a Roma. Thank you. It's great to be here. It's really fascinating for me always to meet another architect and hear about their creative processes. So tell me a little bit about yours. I think that all start with the creative research. I explore all the capabilities of intellectual design without neglecting the aesthetical side. That's why the name of our firm, Brain Factory. But at the same time, I love break the rules with our design and thinking out of the box. Rome must be the best place to do it. I mean, how does Rome inspire you? Let me show what makes a so special room. I mean, really, how could you not be inspired by thousands of years of architectural history like this? But what about driving in Rome? I'm someone that loves driving and I love cities. What's it like driving in Rome? Rome is full of broad avenue, of small street. So, like a driver, I must to be attentive, agile, dynamic. That sounds like something that you would be, actually. I can believe <laughs> that. And what's it like actually getting around, though, in Rome? Oh, I think that uh, there are bumpy roads. <laughs> so you need good ground clearance? <laughs> yes, of course. And, and I think good sustenance. I've heard that Rome has fantastic food and the best ice cream in the world. So can we go now and get the perfect Roman gelato? You Come me? with me, yes. I show a good gelato in Rome. What's I your love favorite chocolate. Flavor? Chocolate. chocolate. I and like yours? pistachio. That was great meeting, Paola. And now, Anna Storiarova, who's going to tell us what makes the Igo Cross perfect for all of the cities in Europe. I'm waiting for Anna, who's the Igo Cross product planner for Toyota Europe. Oh, well, hey, Anna. 
Hi, Pierce. Hi, Anna. Nice to meet you. You too. How was your trip? It was good. How are you doing? Good. You got the good chair. Yeah, it's very sturdy. I'm not jealous of that one. <laughs> so, Anna Stoliarova, as product planner for Toyota, tell me how European cities influence the new Igo Cross. Well, actually, they're more than influenced Igo Cross. They shaped it. Our team has traveled across Europe's most vibrant capitals. They were drawing inspiration from its people and contemporary cultures. We also studied deeply the future of urban life and urban mobility because we really wanted to bring more boldness and more spice to small car buyers. As I've just been seeing on the streets in Rome, city driving has its own set of challenges. Yes, the small city car has to do many things. It has to make you feel confident and comfortable behind the wheel, yet it has to be maneuverable, agile and nimble to navigate all these small streets like those in Rome. Because of TNJB platform, we have longer wheelbase and wider track so that you are sturdy and confident on the road, but it at the same time has a very small turning radius, just 4.7 meters, meaning that even the tiniest and more narrowest streets are okay for you to handle. You have especially a lot of space for the front uh, passenger and the driver, but also the boot space is increased. It's about 60 liters more than the outgoing IGO. How will drivers experience the difference in ride compared with the previous IGO? Well, first of all, it's higher by 55 millimeters. You have big 18-inch wheels and higher ground clearance. It's not just done for the great SUV look, it's also for great handling and more confident ride. Is it just a car for cities though, or can you imagine using it on the highway? Actually, when driving on higher speeds, like on the highway, you have best-in-class NVH and stability. Because the upper body is stiffer, the suspension has to work less and it's lighter so that you have low body roll, faster acceleration or much lower fuel consumption. It also strikes me as a car that might be packed full of other Features. There are many indeed. One to mention is uh, latest Toyota Safety Sense system with lane trace assist and adaptive cruise control. It comes at standard on all grades because we don't want to compromise on safety. It also has continuously variable transmission, which is very smooth and precisely tuned for the city driving. You won't expect actually to meet a CVT in A segment and you won't find it except on IGO Cross. You can go to up to 9 inch touch screen with Toyota Smart Connect system with wireless phone connection, wireless phone charger and ambient lighting. How's the sound system? We have with JBL uh, developed especially for IGO a JBL premium sound system with four speakers and a subwoofer so that you definitely will enjoy your ride. Great. Can we go and have a look? Of course. Because I have noticed this canvas roof which looks really intriguing. Yes, that's another feature we are very happy about. It's the canvas roof that is bigger and wider than on the previous IGO and it's just this emotional wind in the hair feature that you can enjoy in the city or on the highway. We call it IGO Cross Air. Can't wait to have a go with that sound system. Can I put something on? Sure. Fantastic. Great to have arrived in Berlin and I'm on my way to meet Laura Goethe. She's a fashion designer and I really want to find out about the city from her perspective. Hey, you must be Laura. Hi. Hi, how are you doing? It's nice I to meet you. you. Yeah. <laughs> Almost every interesting artist and designer at some point in their life has been drawn to Berlin. And so what's it like for you working here? I think the big promise that Berlin still holds for people is freedom. You have time and space here to create and explore. You have a good life here, with, even if you don't earn that much money. And that's why I think it draws so many people here. I often think of Berlin as a city that has been shot in black and white. Yeah. But uh, talk to me about colour, colour in your work. 
I think colors are just fun. They demand attention. The more they are, the more they clash, and that's where it gets really interesting, I think. They give us instant references, and colorful things make us want to interact with objects, with people, with clothing, and that's what I think is so interesting about color. And what about getting around? I mean, what's it like driving in Berlin? Driving in Berlin is fun, but also challenging. When I first started driving here, I was super scared, but now I actually love it because I know the routes, I know my way around the city, and also German cities after World War II have been rebuilt to work for cars. Unlike cities like Rome or Paris, where like narrow bendy roads, here it's quite comfortable to drive, especially once you reach the outskirts and you can just cruise over the countryside. I want to see the craziest roads. Can yeah. you take me on a driving tour of Berlin? Yeah, of course. Okay, let's, let's go. go. Wow, that was a great introduction to Berlin style in terms of fashion and driving from Laura. And now I have the honor of meeting a great stylist, Tadao Mori, head of styling at Toyota Motor Europe. Tata Omori, you're head of styling for Toyota Motor Europe. What did you set out to achieve with the new iGo Cross? Firstly, we set up the keyword spice, fun, and X. Actually, I can see the X in the back and the front. Exactly. Make it more fun, emotional, and dynamic. It also looks super agile. How did you achieve that look? It is very important to set up a nice package. So we need a bigger, large diameter tires and set four corners. This means super short overhang. And also front view and rear view, tire has to be sticking out. So that makes more agile and good stance. This car has to be much in the urban situation. So that's why we designed very nicely, sophisticated surface with high lift. So this is kind of a new genre. It's recognizably a Toyota, and I see lots of design cues from previous Toyotas. It also is a car that's been designed specifically to be European. What does that mean? It's for Toyota design, uh, we have a certain direction. For example, front we call a keen look. So headlamp has to be very much sharp and confident looking. So the rear combi has a nice signature that creates a Toyota style. The interior has been designed for this thing that is called shared interaction. Tell me what that means. Yeah, shared interaction for the passenger and driver is very important. We don't want to divide two people. That's why instrumental panel is very much over shape. This car, this fits perfectly in European cities because of the size and also nice confident look. And uh, also this Python makes more vibrant appeal in the European city. But what about the body color, the rest of that? We have four spice colors. Chill red, fun, and daring. Juniper blue is icy cool concept. Ginger beige is warm and sophisticated. My favorite color is cardamom green, which is understated aesthetics. I like the blue partly because it's icy cool, but also because I only wear blue. Thanks so much, Tadao. Thank you very much. Hi there. I hope you enjoyed our I Go Cross European city trip. Thanks for watching. Let me say, Lance, what an amazing video. Because you oh, touched right. Thanks a very much. lot of fields. Uh, I'm an architect, so I really love to meet another architect from Rome that uh, presented the, <laughs> the new I Go Cross and the other artists then uh, you know that's beautiful the work was on every field to create the, the new car yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, I think also for the you know pr and marketing departments they they did a great job in that uh, you know launch video because it's kind of different than normal and i think because we were trying to you know shake up a little bit the a segment and they understood our, our process we talked with them you know it's like a very uh, polished version of what we did at the very beginning of the project where we sent designers to Copenhagen, we sent designers to, to Berlin to really get uh, the information firsthand from these uh, you know, city 
inhabitants and, and get that kind of um, unique uh, influence from them. So yeah, I mean, they understood that and the way they launched, they, they created that video was, was really in line with uh, our process. It was great. So for this new project, you uh, involved also a lot of the uh, marketing and uh, having uh, different voices on, on, the same, on the same table, different uh, uh, fields on the same table. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, over the years, we've we've created a really good collaboration with uh, the product planning and marketing uh, division up in in Toyota Motor Europe, and um, you know, we work in a very creative way. We bounce ideas off each other, and uh, of course, you know, <laughs> designers often have different opinions. But I think having a different opinion makes the project better in the end because uh, they can we can try to convince them of our idea, and they can try to convince us of their idea. So I think, you know, we spend a lot of time, well, we used to spend a lot of time on uh, research trips and design safaris together. So we created a good um, collaboration. And also in, you know, in, the, in the, the film, you saw Andrea, Andrea Carlucci, who was very pro-design. So it's very, very nice to work with uh, you know, marketing and, and product planning who really want to, to see great design for Toyota. Yeah, that's beautiful. But now I have a very big surprise for you, Lance. So we can just... Uh... Uh, launch a uh, nice picture because uh, <laughs> yeah, yep. I want to create all the That's... cool team uh, production styling studio from Zamantem, Belgium. And uh, I know for sure that this great team uh, made it possible, uh, make this, this new model possible. Yeah, exactly. To be honest, those guys have the hardest work. We have the, the fun to create the show car and the fun to create the initial ideas, but the, it's those uh, you know, guys in, and, and girls in that photo who have to do all the negotiation with the engineering, all the, the struggle over the hard points to try to retain the original themes. And I think, you know, especially for the Igo Cross, they did a really fantastic job. The production uh, is, is a great product and uh, you know, it's going to be really exciting. And so you know, congratulations to all of them as well. It's a very European... Uh, project the IGO starting you know from European research you know, ideas are created in ED Square we pass them up for the productionization in Brussels working with the big team in design engineering marketing and of course it's going to be produced in in Europe as well in in the Czech Republic so yeah it's a great European project for Toyota a very big small car beautiful car and we saw on on the streets very very close it um you launched it five five days ago, something something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was only five days ago that we had the the virtual launch to uh, a selected number of, of journalists. So uh, I think you know there are little bits of that uh, launch movie on the internet already, but I think it's kind of almost like the public premiere for the full movie. Yeah, cool. Now let's. It's time for the Q and A session, and we have a lot of questions by our our audience. And a lot of congratulations all, 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 uh, for all the works. But uh, uh, for example, um, they ask us, uh, uh, this is a small car with a great personality and futuristic look. Uh, do you think the future is going in this direction with small car uh, traveling, uh, wandering in the city, in the urban scenario? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I heard some people imagine mobility uh, in the future is just a commodity. So when people are going to move into car sharing, you know, they'll be moving around in, in, in fridges or white goods with very little emotion. But to be honest, I think completely the opposite. Um, even in the age of car sharing, people are still going to want to be associated with something cool and inspiring. Um, and they're going to be attracted to use mobility that's going to have an emotion and looks fun to drive. So, you know, mobility and I think, you know, the whole experience design genre is going to be the big challenge for the future, um, especially for big car companies like ourselves. We're moving in to become a mobility company, but there's also a lot of, you know, competitors coming from different um, industries, such as uh, uh, you know, high-tech industries or, or, you know, computer companies, if Apple ever, ever make a car. So there's going to be a lot of challenge in the future, but we're already kind of uh, working on the, the, the future ourselves. So we're in a good good place to uh, to keep our our emotional direction going okay and uh, thank you for the for the answer um, and another question by Andres uh, that they live in Mexico City uh, he said that there is there will be the possibility in the future to see this car in Mexico City 
<laughs> I'd love I'd love the car to be uh, sold worldwide. worldwide. I think at the moment uh, the, the 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 car is only going to be sold in Europe for now. Uh, production is in Europe, and it's only for for European markets. But you know, you, you never say never. Uh, if we get a good reaction from from other countries, and uh, you know, potentially in the future, we could could be able to sell it outside of Europe too. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And uh, uh, you know that we have a lot of students that are watching us and uh, hmm. a lot of young designers that said, I really want to work for uh, Toyota Dream Team. And uh, my question is, uh, uh, what's your advice for young designers and young students just to improve their, their skills or, uh, for example, in the future, apply for a uh, Toyota Design Team? Yeah. Uh, well, I think, of course, uh, you know, if you want to be a designer, you have to have a skill in, in, in drawing and sketching and expressing your ideas. But I, I think one thing which is, is kind of important, uh, I mention it you know, so, to the designers here, is, is curiosity. So I think curiosity and creativity go together hand in hand. And, um, you know, it, it's, I always ask uh, not to be curious just about car design. You can be curious about design in general, but also be curious about the world in general. Um, I think design is always about uh, solving problems in an aesthetic way. And when you're curious, you start to see these problems and think about how to solve them. Um, so I think, you know, more and more it's about the experience that we can provide to the customer. So if you're curious about the customer, you can learn something new. You can try to apply that in your next project. Um, and I think, you know, improving the customer's day-to-day uh, -day activities, uh, you know, is, 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 is something that we can do with a mobility solution as well. So, you know, I think stay curious about influences, about, uh, you know, social trends um, and try to anticipate in the future what you can provide uh, to the future customer before they actually know it. So before asking them what they want, um, we can provide them with a, you know, a positive product that's going to enable them to enjoy life uh, in, in a different way or enjoy mobility more or be able to express their personal um, expression uh, better. So I think, you know, curious and, of course, the, the, the sketching skills are, are going to be vital. But uh, curiosity and, uh, you know, always thinking creatively. Yeah, thank you so much. This is a very uh, golden advice. And we are at the end, Lance. So thank you so much for your presentation. And we have a special thank, thanks by uh, Mr. Artioli to Saki Nagata for uh, her kindness yeah. and uh, <laughs> from all the auto style uh, stuff. And uh, thank you so much. I really want to see this, this car by the street, uh, just in Rome, but all over, all over Europe, all over the world in the future. Thank you so much, Lance. And uh, see you next thank year, you maybe day. by person, thank, I hope thank, so. Yeah. Thank you everyone, Otisile as well. Thank you very thank much. Thank you, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Okay. Now we are at the end with Toyota. We saw beautiful videos and all the uh, workflow to produce uh, uh, this new, uh, very big, small car. And uh, remember to apply to the to the Wacom contest. You can find in the chat the link so you can uh, design your dream car. And uh, see you next week on Thursday. Stay tuned for more and more news. Thank you so much. Goodbye.